This is the book of the Revelation, chapter 20, and verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai, and for the word of Yahweh, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Hamasiah Yahushai a thousand years. Shalom, giving all glorification, honor, and praises unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Rakah, Kwadash. Dumb honors, as always, extended to the venerable apostles of the great millstone, along with the bishops of Zakon Yom, who guide and teach the church well in these last days. And I want to say salutations, peace, and blessings. Be unto the Bayath Shah Dawada, the house of David the elect, beginning with 144,000, the men of the Lord, his servants, the prophets. All right, those of you, Akiyam, who were teaching, preaching, and prophesying the right way on highways and edges throughout the four corners of the earth, those of you waking up the lost sheep at the house of Israel, on down to that remnant of believing Israelites, the men, women, and children who believed our report. The friends and helps of the prophets, they too are going to be delivered out of this common destruction. And that's what's coming to America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. Total, complete, and utter destruction. Compliments of the ICBMs, Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, and the Chariots of the Lord. And, um, yeah, basically, I'm just going to get into, you know, the affliction that's coming. Uh, the persecution. All right, and, uh. The suffering is coming to uh, to some of the prophets. Not all the prophets are going to be beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for his word. Okay, but there will be some men, some holy men, all right, some of the 144,000, all right, who will be beheaded for this man, all right, for believing his word, for preaching his word, for standing stiffly, all right, for Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. That's just part of it, man. You know, when we came into the truth, whenever it is you came in, you know, you had to sit down, we all had to sit down, we had to count the costs, all right, to see if we could do this, all right, we counted the costs, and then we put our hands to the plow, all right, which is a metaphor for us going out into the highways and edges and teaching this word, man, okay, and this could come with the territory, again, not everyone is going to stand in this lot, okay, but it says, Again, in Revelation chapter 20, and verse 4, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, okay, for the witness of Yahweh Shah, for the word of Yahweh, okay? So, this is just a reality. And, you know, I was listening to, uh, today is uh, September 3rd, uh, 2023, the hopeful year that all these prophecies come to pass. And I was listening to the elder Yashawamba earlier, and I was listening to the elder Apostle Gabar. All right. They were both speaking on this subject. Um, you know, and the elder Apostle Gabar made a, a comment that this is not a very pleasant thought. All right. But it's a realistic thought. You know, this isn't a very pleasant subject, obviously. All right. To think about being beheaded. All right, that that's uh that's definitely part of the bitter. All right, that comes with this truth, man. You know, because when you first come in, you know, it talks about, you know, when you first come in, when you first realize you're a Jake, you're an Israelite. Okay, um, it's a it's a real sweet time, and it, that was a sweet time coming in, learning the name of the Lord. All right, everything making sense. You know, uh, b being able to connect the dots so to speak that was there was a time you know early on in, in my journey and all brothers can can testify of this you know where it was just a real sweet time you know but as you grow in grace and in knowledge you know which is a commandment all right we're supposed to grow in grace and in knowledge all right that's second peter the third chapter all right as you grow in grace and in knowledge Okay, as you begin to learn more and more, and as you begin to understand more and more, and as you begin to digest more and more, that sweet, all right, taste, all right, turns bitter. All right, 
because you realize the dire situation that you're in. All right, being a Jake in Babylon the Great, especially in 2023. Okay, because, you know, Esau, we always bring these scriptures out. All right, so I'm not going to go and get it, but, you know, you know the scripture. Esau, all right, when we talk about Esau, it's, we talk about his elites, first and foremost, the, the power brokers in the earth, all right, the ones, okay, looking to bring about this NWO, looking to bring about this great reset, all right, the, the, the international bankers, okay, um, they're getting ready to come down with that, with that, with that wrath, okay, because they know they only have a short time left to rule and reign. So, get ready, man. All right, get ready. This is this is why, you know, it was always better to be in the house of mourning and house of feasting. Okay, you have to to uh, you have to have this in your mindset that this could happen to you. I have to have this in my mindset that this could happen. Okay, that I could be thrown in prison, tortured. They got torture chambers re ready. Okay, they got torture chambers ready. You know, and and all these things happened in 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 the ancient world. You know, that which is then is now. Right. You look at what happened to the, that family in Second Maccabees seven. Matter of fact, let me get that. Look at what happened. All right, today, I was reading about this earlier today. And this is, I got a, a couple precepts that I pulled up, but, you know, we'll see, you know, where the spirit takes it. Um, second Mac 7. All right. Again, affliction, persecution, and martyrdom. You know, that's all part of this, man. Okay. That's all part of this. And we all knew this um, coming in. All right, uh, let's see. Okay, hold on. Um, well, let's just go ahead and, well, it starts at the top of uh, 2 Maccabees, the 7th chapter, in the first verse. All right, 2 Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 1. It came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh and was tormented with scourges and whips. All right, now, <laughs> I'm just going to keep reading. Because Christians are so uh, ridiculous and, and, and wicked and anti-Messiah with that bullshit, with that nonsense of the laws are done away with. Here it is, these these uh, brothers and their mother, all right, are facing the, the, the torture chamber, if you will, all right, for refusing to eat swine. And you Christians are running around willy-nilly talking about you can eat whatever you want. Fuck out of here, man. And that's why the Most High is going to put you unbelieving shakes, all right, to death when he comes back for transgressing the dietary law. Specifically tells you that in Isaiah 66, all right, eating swine's flesh, eating shrimp, eating uh, lobster, crab, you know, it's, it's an abomination. But these men, all right, were, were willing to undergo uh, torture. Okay, to keep to keep the commandments of the Most High Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, Israelite foreigners who are the Lord's people in the earth today, all right, who just are willy-nilly out here breaking the law, such commandments, you're gonna be destroyed, man. You're gonna be destroyed. All right, says so this is integrity right here, man. This is what I mean. We have several examples and pictures of integrity in the script. You know, Job, some someone who comes to mind. Obviously, Yahweh, you know, um, and 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 these brothers right here and their mother. This is what integrity looks like, man. Okay. Um, verse two. But one of them that spake first said, "Thus, what wouldst thou ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers." See, they were ready to die, man, because they didn't want to eat pork. That's transgressing the law, man. Sin is the transgression of the law. They didn't want to eat that swine's flesh. 
So they were, they was ready to die. They was ready to taste death. Then the king, being in a rage, commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot, which forthwith being heated, verse 4, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first and to cut off the utmost parts of his body, the rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. Verse 5. Now, again, this isn't pleasant, man. All right? But we're commanded to, 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 bring, to bring you the whole counsel of the Lord, man. The whole counsel of Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai. This is part of it, all right? Verse 5, Now when he was thus maimed in all his members, he commanded him, being yet alive, to be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pan. And as the vapor of the pan was for a good space dispersed, they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully, saying thus, The Lord God Yahweh looketh upon us, and in truth hath comfort in us, as Moses in his song which witness to their faces declared, saying, and he shall be confident in his servants. Okay? This, ta this type of torture is coming back. Okay? This type of torture and worse is coming back. All right? Again, you know, Acts 14 and verse 22 is a, a, a good scripture. You know? Through much tribulation shall you enter into the kingdom of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, the, the saints, uh, the men of the Lord, the servants, the prophets are going to go through it, man. All right, we're going to go through it. Verse 7, so when the first was dead after this number, they brought the second to make him a mocking stock. And when they had pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, they asked him, Wilt thou eat before thou be punished throughout every member of thy body? Come on, man. But he answered in his own language, I right, speaking in Hebrew, I said, no. Wherefore, he also received the next torment in order as the former did. Verse 9, and when he was at the last gasp, he said, thou like a fury takest us out of this present life. But the king of the world, our right, Yahweh, by Shem Yahushua, shall raise us up. See, there's the comfort. And that's the kind of faith, man, that, that, that extraordinary supernatural faith that's the kind of faith we're all going to have to, to walk in, all right, to make it through this. And ultimately, if you're of the elect, you're going to make it through it, all right? And this is the comfort right here, right? We're supposed to comfort one another with these words. It says, but the king of the world shall raise us up who have died for his laws unto everlasting life. So they knew there was a reward waiting for them, okay? All right, so, you know, let's keep going. Verse 10 after him was the third made a mocking stock, and when he was required, he put out his tongue, and that right soon, holding forth his hands manfully, and said courageously, These I had from heaven, and for his laws I despise them, and from him I hope to receive them again. Yup. Yup. So anyway, um, these things are going to, you know, are going to be taking place, man. Okay. In these last days. Believe it or not. Okay. Um, let's see. And I got a, I got an article to get into. And, and it, you know, it's old news. A lot of this is going to be by way of review. It's old news. But, you know, it's pertinent. Because we're at that time where they're getting ready to execute on their plan, man. They being the elites of Esau, the Dukes of Edom. They're getting ready to execute, all right, and move. All right. Let's see. I'm going to go to Matthews. Let's go to Luke's. All right, 21st chapter. Um, I'll start in verse 10. It says, uh, then said he unto them, this is Yahweh speaking, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. All right. We're in this time right now, man. All right. Which uh, every other day we hear earthquakes, famines all around us. Okay. Pestilence is all around us. 
right? Fear, the fearful sights are in heaven, the, 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 the super blue moons, the lunar eclipses, the solar eclipses, the chariots, okay? Verse 12, but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you. See? Delivering you up to the synagogues and into, and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake, okay? And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Verse 14. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Right? So we don't have to, if, if you are, if you're one of them brothers that are drugged before, you know, one of these rulers, one of these kings, okay, to, to testify. All right, in front of them, you don't have you don't have to meditate on how you're gonna answer them, man. You don't have to meditate on how you're gonna answer them, damn devils. All right, how will bless me? Shah is gonna give you a mouth and wisdom. Okay, it says it says which all your adversaries should not be able to gainsay nor resist. Okay, so you're gonna confound them, man, through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bashem Shah. It says, and ye shall be betrayed. Listen, and ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren, yet are agents in the camps. You might be holding the line with a man you've known for 10 years who might turn you in. Huh? you got to envision that happening in your mind's eye. Again, these aren't pleasant things to, 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 to meditate on, but we, we have to. Okay? And we would be, you know, we would be wicked if we was holding, all right, these types of teachings back, man. Huh? You know, if we were holding back our sword from drawing blood, that made that make us wicked, man. So we gotta warn you. This is this is this this is why you need to fear the Lord, man. <laughs> and you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. So see, some men are gonna die. Some men are gonna be martyred. All right. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. All right. So, and again, the comfort is, you know, when, when, when the Lord returns on that, on them, you know, with the holy angels on them ships. All right. Those men who have been martyred and beheaded and tortured to death, they're going to be risen up first, man. <laughs> yeah. There's the comfort. They're going to be risen up first. All right. So, yeah. That's why it says on um, what it says right here in verse 18. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. See? So. I had Matthews 10. Yeah, here we go. That's pretty much saying the same thing. Um. I mean, that's pretty much the same thing. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 21. Verses like 21 and 22. And the brother shall deliver up deliver up the brother to death and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So we got to endure all this, man. You know, we got to, just like Yahweh endured his hour of temptation, we got to endure our hour of temptation. All right. That's why we're supposed to be praying, you know, constantly every day to the Lord to keep his spirit, his Holy Spirit on us and, 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 and make us and make us to be able to endure, man. Okay. And make us to be able to endure. You know, because if you don't endure unto the end, you're not going to be saved. It's another cut, you goofy, retarded ass Christians. Running around talking about, oh, I'm safe. <laughs> From what? The hour of temptation that we hadn't gotten there yet. That's coming. I said, what are you, what are you safe from? Y'all are a bunch of fucking dumbasses, man. There was another... Um, Oh, yeah, Matthew's the 24th chapter. I had that pulled up, too. I'll read that. 
And yeah, he's going to come with this persecution. But guess what? Jake's going to come. Jake's going to have his hand in it. You know? All these wicked scribes and Pharisees out here are going to uh, uh, be coming against the men of the Lord. All right? Same as it was when Yahweh Shai was on the scene. Same, same as it was, you know, when the prophets, all right, in the ancient world were on the scene. Wicked Jake, man. Wicked Jake. Let's see. Yeah, this is Matthew 24. Let's see. Let's just go to Matthew 24. Well, let's see. Matthew chapter 24, in verse 9, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Okay? It's pretty much saying the same things in Luke. All right? And in Matthew and in Mark, you know, the synoptic gospels. Matthew, uh, Mark, and Luke. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended. See, a lot of men are going to fall out, man. All right, they're going to be offended. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to scatter. All right, they're going to, they're going to scatter. When the heat gets to be too high, they're going to be offended, and they're going to, they're going to, they're going to fall out. All right, they're going to be offended, and then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another. See, and shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. All right. You know, and it goes on to say, you know, the elect will not be deceived. There's no way to, to deceive the elect. That's comfort, man. It says if it were possible, they'd deceive even the elect. Roughly paraphrasing. The point is, you know, affliction, persecution, you know, and even martyrdom. Okay. Is coming. All right, with Jacob's trouble. So um, let's let's go to uh, let's go to this article. This is there's a lot of good information and a lot of it's old news. Okay, and I'll have to try and remember to put this in the uh, description box a link. All right, but um. FBI agent Ted Gunderson. I mean, he he goes way back. Uh, he's he's deceased now. Former FBI agent, you know. Uh, FEMA smart guillotines placed in FEMA internment camps in case of martial law in times of civil disorder. That's the time we're headed into, man. Okay. You know that we we opened the lesson. I opened the lesson with Re uh, Revelation twenty and verse four, which talked about beheadings. Okay. And there are guillotines on U.S. soil. This is old. Again, this is old news. Ten years ago, when we were bringing these things out, you know, we were looked at as whack jobs. Twenty years ago, whack jobs. Imagine the apostles, what they've been dealing with for 35 plus years. In some cases, you know, beginning with the elder apostle hard on down, you know, looked at as lunatics, man. But now we don't look so crazy, do we? Nope. All right. And the wheels have been in motion for quite some time. You know, even the Apostle Paul in Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, said the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. So these Edomites, you know, even during Paul's day, you know, the Romans was uh, working towards this NWO. OK, it just wasn't time back then. OK, now it's time. All right. So let's play. There's several videos on this. I'm not going to read through a lot, you know, read through all this. Um, you can read through it. Um, and, you know, do your own research, but I'll play some of these videos. All right. They're going to declare martial law. Okay. Again, they're getting ready to shut this shit down. You know, they can they can shut it down and blame it on these new variants. They can shut it down. They they could they could they could uh, take down the grid, blame it on Russia or North Korea, China, and uh, shut it down because of that. You know, ever how it goes, man. Lockdowns are coming. All right, lockdowns are coming. Welcome to the NWO. All right, and you that go, that go along and you Jake's that consent are going to be had in derision. All right, 
You're going to be trodden underfoot, man. You're going to be destroyed out here during the time of Jacob's trouble. Those of you who consent to this bullshit, and, and those of you who let Esau, all right, M-A-R-K you with that karagma, with that C-Hup, you know, yeah, you, you know, second uh, Ezra 16 goes into that. You're going to be, you know, you're going to be destroyed, man. All right, let's play some of this. It's not like you. Back taxes. Kevin Sorbo here with an important message. The... There's a lot going on right now. Decisions being made that are unprecedented will have an overreaching impact on what it means to live in the United States of America. Both the Senate and the House of Representatives have just overwhelmingly passed the National Defense Authorization Act. Squeezed into this military funding bill are two provisions that give the military not just lots and lots of money. Oh, you, uh, especially you, 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 uh, uh, you, uh, uh dumbass, uh, 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 so-called Negroes, all right, you of the, uh, Southern Kingdom, all right, Judah, all right, this, this is your boy Barack Obama who did this in, in the AA. Now, we know these presidents, you know, they're just, you know, puppets working for Amalek, okay, but this, he was the face behind this, man, the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, y'all were cheering for his ass, you know, Y'all were cheering for him, you know. That was that was y'all's king, man. That was your Caesar, fucking goofy uh, Hamite. Not even your people, man. Not even our people. A yeah, fucking Hamite. You know. You two thirds, man, gotta go. You're gonna be fucking destroyed, man. It says that in Zechariah 13. Obviously, it says it in Amos. You know the ninth chapter where it talks about the sinners. All the sinners of my people will die by the sword. Fucking Barack Obama. And lots of power as well. A new generation of surveillance drones could soon be watching us all. The Federal Aviation Administration is expected to announce plans to expand the use of domestic drones in American airspace. Well, get ready to look up at the sky and see drones hovering above. As of now, unmanned aircraft could only be used by military airspace and by certain law enforcement agencies. But this week, Congress passed a bill that would allow for commercial and private use of the drones. I have two words for you. Predator drones. We will never see it coming. You think I'm joking? shopping and dining over Thanksgiving and maybe watching some football games, big government Republicans and Democrats were busy shredding the last vestiges of the Constitution. Senators John McCain and Carl Levin want to declare, want to enact a law that would declare the entire United States of America a battlefield for the military. They're talking about inserting the army into domestic law enforcement. Senator Lindsey Graham, who supports this bill, says, quote, the homeland is part of the battlefield, and people can be held without trial, whether an American citizen or not. The Department of Homeland Security buying ammunition, now looking to purchase another 21 million rounds of ammunition. This in addition to... Yeah, now you know they're arming the IRS, these IRS agents. And all these so-called illegal aliens that are coming in, all right, through the southern border... And through the northern border coming into Babylon, aka America, all right, men who are uh, 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 ages 18 to 25, 18 to 35, all right, they're going to be arming them, okay, and they're going to be on the streets, all right, cracking your fucking skulls, man, okay, yeah, the IRS is getting ready to come after your asses, all right. Martial law troops, UN troops. Okay. Of course, so the 1.6 billion rounds that Homeland Security has bought in just the past 10 months. Now, to put all of this in perspective, the military used approximately 70 million rounds each year of the Iraq War. 70 million rounds in a war. If you look at what the Department of Homeland Security has been purchasing over the last year, 
Uh, it comes out to like 1.6 billion rounds of ammunition, more than 7,000 fully automatic assault weapons, 2,700 MRAP type vehicles, and now drones. Those are instruments of war. Department of Homeland Security's, who are they going to fight a war against? Think about that. Something happened to Supervisor for El Paso SRT. Neighbor is. Armored security investigation. Well, we have our, our big vehicle out here. It's an armored vehicle. Uh, it's an AMRAP vehicle. It's mine resistant, ambush protected. That's what it stands for. That's what we use to deliver our, our, um, our team to uh, high risk warrant services. The affirmative task we have now is uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. Creepy sleepy. All right. Um, wait a minute. There's, yeah, and like I say, is well, like the Bible says, it's not just Esau that's going to come down. All right. A lot of these wicked Israelite camps, a lot of these wicked scribes and Pharisees who are opposed to the truth. All right. They're going to be responsible for delivering up the men of the Lord. Okay. Again, it's that which was then is now. Hold on. I was reading that way. Let's see, I got I might have to look it up. I know I was, I was reading it earlier. Oh yeah, Luke eleven. Luke chapter eleven. All right, bear with me. Yeah. This is Yahweh shot cussing y'all out, man. You wicked false prophets that all right, uh uh who ain't bringing out the, the prophecies, who ain't warning the lambs to flee the wrath to come, who ain't warning Israel, okay, that the MOTB is the sea up, who are, again, who are holding back their sword from drawing blood, okay, being wicked, all right, not prophesying against Mount Seir, saying there's no Jacob's trouble, all right, y'all are back in y'all's lot, man, okay, and Yahweh shot cussed you out 2,000 years ago, and we cussing you out through the Spirit, today y'all gonna come all right hard as esau all right um i'll just start at uh verse 48 luke's 11 and verse 48 truly you bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers for they in, indeed killed them all right talking about killing the prophets and ye build their sepulchers it says, um, therefore also said the wisdom of Yahweh, verse 40, and I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute. See? Some of them they shall slay and persecute. All right, that the blood of all the prophets, verse 50, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. The generation we're in right now. Okay? Again, you wicked asses are here, back, standing in your lot. Ready to turn on the men of the Lord. Ready to slay and persecute, man. Verse 51, from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. <coughs> Salakia. Um, there was something in Acts. Bear with me. Something in Acts 7. When stepping steady, cussing y'all out. Cutting y'all to pieces with the with the with the word, you know, because this word is sharper than any double edged sword, than any two edged sword. Let's we'll see where I had Acts seven pulled up. I know I did. Hey, here we go. Yeah, okay. Um, Acts chapter 7 and verse 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do, always re ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets, verse 52, have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the just one. All right, yeah, I wish I of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. See? 
And that's what sent them wicked scribes and Pharisees over to over the edge, man. And they turn and and you know, well, you can read it. You know, they ended up stoning Stephen. All right. So wicked scribes and Pharisees have a lot of blood on your hands. And you're gonna pay for that. Where's my article? Oh, shit. <laughs> Looking like I closed it. Oh, no, here it is. Huh. So, like, yeah. I'm going to wrap it up here in just a minute. But let's, um, one of these videos, you got Hillary Clinton talking about camps, literally talk, openly talking about FEMA camps for certain Americans. Yeah, why are they doing this if they're not going to come down with that wrath? Why are they going through all these drills? Why are they wargaming like this? Why are they making preparations to come against you people? Okay, which ultimately their 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 uh, number one target is are the prophets of the Lord. All right, but a lot of people are going to get caught up in this, <coughs> including you Christians. All right, because there's not going to be any dissent allowed. All right. There is no room for dissent. All right. Within this B system, within this NWO he's setting up, you don't have a voice. All right. You're going to, you know, and, and that's why many of you are all right. All right. You're going to be found out that you're going to find out that you never believed in this Bible at all. And you're going to bend that knee and you're going to bow down and you're going to worship Baal. And you're going to worship the beast in his image, which is his construct, everything that he's about, his philosophies, his ideologies, his way of life. You're going to accept all that, and you're going to let him put that C-hip in you. Wait. Watch. So that when they do actually lock down the country, they've got everything secured. But I think what we're starting to see, for anybody who is objective at all, is we're seeing a totalitarian system now unveil itself. And ever since essentially 9-11 happened, it's been more and more of these draconian measures that are leading us right down the road to martial law. Particularly to hear President Obama claim the power to keep people in prison indefinitely with no charges against them, no conviction, no sentence, just imprisonment. It's particularly stunning to hear him make that claim in the middle of a speech that was all about the rule of law. This last week, the U.S. Congress passed a bill uh, which repeals the Fussing Comitatus, which means that they, we have now uh, institutionalized and codified uh, martial law. Right now, the, the battle against uh, terrorism involves all of us. Everybody in this country is a potential terrorist. We don't even understand freedom anymore. We are a country that is headed towards socialism, totalitarianism, beyond your wildest imagination. I have to tell you, I'm doing a story tonight that I wanted to debunk these FEMA camps. I'm tired of hearing. You know about them? Sure. I'm tired of hearing. I wanted to debunk them. Well, we've now for several days done research on them. I can't debunk them. I don't know anything about them. It is, it is our government. 
government. If you trust our government, it's fine. If you have any kind of fear that we might be headed towards a totalitarian state, look out. Buckle up. There's something going on in our country that is uh, ain't good. And they find a little red dot or a little blue dot on their mailbox. And they wonder what the little red dot, blue dot is. Well, it's marking your mailbox by the government. So when foreign troops come in here on us after martial law, but if you have a blue dot, they take you to the FEMA camps being built by Halliburton right now to house 50 million Americans. They're building enough concentration camps in America by Halliburton. So I'm going to tell all of you, if you have not bought ammunition, if you have not bought guns, go get them now. Go get them now. Change has come to America. Practice Christianity and you could be court martialed. All right, let's see. Yeah, you can go look up Ted Gunderson. You know. I'll have to remember. Yeah, there's the video where that witch, and she is, she's a literal witch. Hillary Clinton. She talked she was talking about camps for Americans. Anyone who doesn't go along with the agenda. See like there's another video down here. Oh down further. Let's see what this is. Do you owe all over ten thousand? thousand dollars in back taxes kevin sorbo here with an important message the That music's getting on my nerves, so like, yeah. Yeah, go look these things up, Directive 51, you know. I'll put a link in the description box. I'll make it easy for you. <laughs> go do your research, man. But Jacob's trouble is here. I mean, we in, the, we in the beginning of sorrows. All right, pre prepare your hearts and your minds. You know, 
Prepare for that affliction to come. Prepare for that persecution. All right. To come. You know, prepare to, to, you know, for martyrdom. That could be your lot. That could be my lot. You got to prepare for it. You got to be prepared. Okay. It may not, it may not come to us. All right. But it's going to come to some of the men of the Lord. They'll say it to scriptures, man. This is what the Bible teaches. And again, it's another reason to fear Yahweh Bahash and Yahweh Shai. Okay? Yeah, fear the Lord, man. Okay? Um, doesn't the scripture say that's the beginning of wisdom? Anyway, we're looking to be those acceptable men, man. All right? And acceptable men are tried, are going to be tried. Okay? And I'll end it with that scripture in Ecclesiastes or Sirach, the second chapter. Let me pause this. We're going to be tried, man. I'm just going to get right to the point. This is Ecclesiastes or Sirach, the second chapter and the fifth verse. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men. That's what we're hoping to be. All right. We're hoping to be acceptable in the eyes of Yahweh. Bush me our side says and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Okay, so we're going to face adversity. All right, we're going to be in straits, positions of difficulty, going through the straight gate, affliction, persecution, possible martyrdom. Okay, believe in him, verse 6, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. That's right. Ye to fear the Lord, starting with the elect men, 144,000, verse 7, wait for his mercy and go not aside lest ye fall. Right. Don't turn to, to either side, man, lest you fall. All right? So I'm going to end it there. You know, hey, Lord willing, he was edified through the Spirit. With that, I want to say shalom and it's on to the next video.